Good day and welcome to this tutorial class. Alright, so we'll be producing this spanner on the screen. And to produce this spanner, we'll be applying the principle of curved tangency and ogee curve. And ogee curve, alright. Likewise, we we'll also be applying uh, one of the principles of conic section, which is uh, the ellipse. We'll be applying it right here also. And the type of ellipse I'm actually going to use for the ends of my spanner, I'll be applying the approximate method or four point method. The approximate method or what's all the four point method of construction of ellipse. Okay, so you can actually check my YouTube channel if you don't know how to actually apply the approximate method or four point method to produce an ellipse. All right, so to produce this problem on the screen. The very first thing, as you can see in the question, we are told that what uh, 25.4 millimeters equals to what one inch. All right, so I've actually did the conversion from my NDA, so I've converted it was to uh, millimeters. All right, so after converting it, to, converting it to millimeters, I deduced that there are some areas that the dimensions are actually small. So for this reason, I increased the scale of this particular drain. So I will be producing this drawing on the screen on a scale of 1 ratio 1.5. I will be producing it on the scale of what? 1 ratio 1.5. What does that imply? That implies that after converting the initial dimension on the screen to millimeters, then I multiply my outcome by what? By 1.5. By 1.5. So after multiplying it by 1.5, I round it off to a whole number. Okay. I round it off to a what to a whole number instead of using decimal place. I round it off to what to a whole number. All right. So uh, what was the very first thing I'm going to do here? The very first thing I'm going to do here is to produce uh, this thin horizontal line in this order. Okay. So after producing that, the very next thing is I'm going to produce uh, this vertical line in this manner. Okay. So ensure your T-square and Z-square are okay. So after producing this, what is the next procedure? What is the next procedure? Okay. So uh, the amount of my spanner here, the dimension here on the initial question on the screen, we are seeing distance of 7.6. But after converting it to millimeters and to a whole number, right, I am having length of 30. Length of 30. So for this reason, picking my ruler, all right, so... Uh, from this midpoint, I mark 15 upwards, 15 downwards on those vertical lines. All right. So after doing that, what is the next procedure? I'm going to project them horizontally towards my what? My left hand side in this order, like this and like this. Okay. So that is that about that all right so now the next thing is what we are told that the arc joining this point to this point on the screen we have what 1.18 1.18 converting it to millimeters and increasing the scale by 1.5 then to a whole number we are having length of what 45 length of 45 radius 45 per se so i pick my compass all right i measure uh radius 45 as you can see for yourself, I measure radius 45, which is this. Okay, with radius 45 right there, I actually stand at this end here. Okay, one of the ends. Then I what I strike an arc like this. Okay, so on that where the arc intersect this horizontal line, then I what I draw. I draw. Okay, so that is that about that. So next is what to produce our what our ellipse. Okay, so after the whole conversion, then increasing the scale by one ratio, 1.5. So for my minor axis, I'm having a uh, diameter 53. Diameter 53 for my minor axis. Okay, um, my minor axis is going to be on the horizontal plane, while my major axis will be on the what? On the vertical plane. All right. So uh, my minor axis diameter 53. That will be radius what? Radius 26.5. So with my compass, I measure radius 26.5 on my ruler. This 26.5. Then standing at this midpoint, okay, I mark 
this way and what this way do you see that okay so i'm going to denote it as mark what mark a and what a and b all right so then our major axis after the conversion i'm having mark of what mark of 67 67 diameter 67 the radius will be what will be 33.5 33.5 so i pick radius 33.5 with my compass on my ruler so then i'm going to strike that on the what on the vertical plane or vertical axis which is this okay so i denote it as what mark what c and what and d so applying uh the principle of approximate method of constructing an ellipse so i'm going to join mark uh a and d all together like this okay joining mark a d like that okay so with radius i'm going to call this midpoint point o center o all right so with radius o d or half half of your uh major axis okay with radius o d or half major axis which is also this okay i'm going to stand on what on uh mark o all right i'm going to stand on my code then what strike an arc on the horizontal plane towards this manner do you see so this area i'm going to call it my code mark e as it were okay then with radius a e with radius a e which is what i'm picking right now with radius a e i what i produce an arc do you see so that arc touches uh this line a d at this point so i named that point as point what point f okay next procedure is that i'm going to bisect distance df okay picking my compass extend this to a radius more than half of df then what on mark f then on mark d okay so that is it so i have bisected mark what mark df so this is my bisector right now here is my what my bisector as you can see on the screen that is my bisector on the screen right there okay so what is the next procedure now so uh, the point at which my bisector touches the horizontal line here i'm going to denote it as mark what mark g okay mark g mark g all right so the next thing is to us to produce uh the ellipse itself to bring out our ellipse so we don't need french curve since we are using approximate method all we need to do is what make use of our what of our compass likewise all right so i'm going to pick my compass all right standing on mark g standing on mark g to mark a like this with radius a g standing on mark g radius a g standing on mark g i would i'm going to draw with thin line first of all so i draw that faintly you see I drew this arcward faintly. Okay, what was the next procedure? Uh, we have my bisector AF, sorry, DF touches the vertical line here. Okay, that will be my what? My H, my mark H, all right? My mark H. So, what I'm going to do is with radius DH, okay, with radius DH. Which is this? I pick radius dh. So ensure you are careful. With radius dh, I what? I draw this. With radius dh, I draw this. Do you see that? So with the same radius dh, I come right here. Do you see? I strike. Sorry, I come to uh, mark c. I come to mark c with the same radius dh. I come to mark c. Then I what? With radius dh, I come to mark c. Can you see? Then I what? I strike an arc on this vertical plane. So wherever my arc touches this vertical plane right here, I what? I place my compass. Then I what? Then I draw likewise. Do you see? I draw likewise. Okay. So picking the same length of what? Of GF. Sorry, GA. Pick a length GA. Okay, that radius which we used to draw this first arc at the top here, GA, this radius GA. I'm going to stand on mark what? Mark B. Okay, strike an arc on this horizontal plane. 
Do you see? Strike and that condition will happen with radius G A. G A. Come to mark B strike and act on the horizontal plane. So wherever the act touches the horizontal line, place your compass right there. Okay. Then what? Uh, I'm going to draw this also faintly, faintly for now. So I've taken it after the whole drawing. So I have those areas like that. So I can actually take in this area out once and for all. So coming back to mark G. Okay, with radius uh G A. Ensure it doesn't shake with radius G A. I can what? I can actually pull this out like this. Okay, it's clear and uh, shaking. Sorry, and likewise, I can pull this out like this. All right, so this area is set to a situation. I'm going to what join this in this manner. All right, then I'm going to join this in this manner. Okay. So now, let's go towards our, what, our right hand side. So our right hand side, uh, on the screen, we have 4.12 inches. So converting it to millimeters, then increasing it by 1.5. I have mark of what? 157. So with my ruler, I pick mark 157 on the horizontal plane right here. Mark 157, which is actually this. Okay. Mark 157, which is this. So having it in that order, I'm going to what produce a vertical line on that mark okay a vertical line which is also a perpendicular like this so i have that right there so uh from this area the mark up there on the screen is 2.0 inches so converting this to millimeters then increasing it by ratio 1.5 we are having uh length of 76 length of 76 so with my ruler I come right here, I pick uh, mark 76. Okay, then I project it horizontally in this order, like this. All right, mark 76 like that. So what is the next procedure? What's the next procedure? All right, so this is what's next. So right here, yeah, the amount of this one idea, we have mark of us. Uh, 0 0.62 0 0.62 inches and converting it to millimeters and increasing the scale by 1.5 we are having uh 24 we are having 24 so with that i'm going to pick what uh 12 upwards from this midpoint here i mark 12 upwards then i mark 12 downwards which is what 24 like that so placing my t square right there like this okay i'm going to project it horizontally towards my right hand side okay then coming down here i project it also what horizontally towards my what my right hand side okay so likewise the arc joining this area is arc of what reach radius 1.18 inches after our total conversion we have what radius what radius 45 so picking my compass all right so measuring uh radius 45 Radius 45, which is this. Radius 45, which is this. So I stand right here. Okay, I strike an arc like this. You see, my arc touches the horizontal line here, right here. Okay, right there, so that you can see. Can you see that? So at this junction now, where my arc touches the horizontal line here, at this junction, I'm going to pick my compass with the same radius 45, sit down here comfortably, and what? And draw. And draw. Okay, that is actually settled like that. That is settled like that. So the next thing is what to develop our ellipse right here. Okay, so to develop our ellipse right here, our minor axis after our conversion is what is 48. After the conversion, then increasing the scale by one ratio of 1.5. Okay, it is what uh, 48. Diameter 48. That will be radius what radius 24. Radius 24. With my compass picking radius 24. Ensure you are careful. And ensure your dimension is is precise. So with ratio twenty with radius twenty four, minor axis is going to be on the our horizontal plane. Okay, so I mark here, I mark here. You see that? So I name it mark mark A and B also mark A and B like that. That's our minor axis. So our major axis after the conversion we have mark of what sixty two. 
diameter 62, the radius will be what? 31, radius 31. So which will be this radius 31. So with radius 31 sitting comfortably at the center right here, I mark on the what vertical plane right here and what and right here. So I need to actually extend this vertical line upwards a little. All right. So I denote it as what mark what C and what and D. So applying the same principle of approximate method of ellipse construction. Approximate method of ellipse construction. So I'm going to join mark C to A in this order ensure they are thin line all right it's because i'm actually doing it on the screen that's why i'm making it uh, legible a little bit so it must be thin so that they won't disrupt uh the final appearance of your work all right so that is that about that so next thing is uh with radius okay with this center has mark what mark o with radius oc with radius oc at mark o i draw an arc on the horizontal plane Okay, I'm having this as mark what E, mark E. So with radius A E, with radius A E, I draw this arc. So my arc touches line A C. So I name this as mark what mark F. So I'm going to bisect distance C F. I bisect distance C F with my compass, any convenient length. Then I would I bisect distance C to what to F. C to F. So by setting distance C to F in this order, I would I draw. So this is my what this is my bisector as it were. Okay, that's my what that's my bisector. All right. So uh, next is what to produce my what my uh, ellipse to produce my ellipse. So uh, first of all, where my bisector touches the horizontal plane, here, I call it my what G mark G. Okay, with radius GF, with radius GF, okay, I draw this at the back lightly, do you see that? I draw that at the back lightly. So with the same radius GF, I stand on mark B right here, I strike an arc, okay, I call it mark what? H, I call it mark H, so at this intersection of this mark here so i what i draw this you see likewise faintly also faintly draw it faintly okay i hope you can see all right so next is what wherever my bisector touches the vertical plane here okay that will be my quote here gh this will be my quote mark i okay with radius i c with radius i c at center c sorry at center i Radius I C at center I. Okay, ensure you don't make mistake. With radius I C at center I, I would I draw. Do you see that I draw? Okay, I draw. Then now with the same radius I C. Okay, I come to mark D right here. I strike an arc. So wherever the arc touches the vertical line here, I stay right there. Do you see that? Okay. Then I what? I draw likewise this direction also. Okay. I draw in this direction also. So I can now take in back to H here. Back to mark H. Then to mark B right here. I can what? I can take in this and what? Uh, shakes. Sorry. Back to mark B right here. I can what? Ticking this also. So then with my ruler, I can what? Draw this limit inside and join this also inside. Okay. So it's looking like it, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. So the next procedure is uh, to get our OG curve, first of all. So I'm going to join mark B right here mark B to mark A right here. So with my ruler, I align mark B to A. I draw it faintly. I join them together, can you see? So joining mark B to mark what? Mark A right here. So after doing that, I'm going to bisect the distance between A and B. Between mark what? Mark B and A. So picking my compass, extending this to more than half of AB. You understand, I think this should be enough. Okay, so I stand on mark B right here okay i strike my arc bottom 
top. I come to Mark 8 with that same dimension, ensuring it doesn't shake top and what bottom. Do you see that? So after doing that, I'm going to draw my what my bisector. So ensure they are drawn with what? With thin continuous line. Okay, thin continuous line. So I draw my bisector as you can see on the screen right there. That is my what? That is my bisector. Alright. So what's the next thing now? I'm going to bisect, I'm going to call this uh O also. So I'm going to bisect distance between B O and what? A O. Let me bisect distance between what? B O and what and A O. So bisecting that, so place my compass on mark B. Or bottom top mark O. Alright. This and this. Do you see that? So I'm going to what? Uh draw the bisector. Like this. That's the bisector right there. Okay. So I'm going to bisect distance OA. O to A also. So sitting on mark O right here. My bisector. Then on mark A right here. My bisector. So I'm going to what? Join that also. Bringing out the bisector also. Okay. Ensure you are careful, ensure there is an alignment there. Okay, just like this. All right, so set it. So I have bisector one, two, and three. But well, majorly we'll be making use of this and what and this. Okay, to so apply the what's the Ogie curve, right? So if you look at our curve at mark OE on the question, we are told that the distance in between the curve is what? Mark seven point I mean point seventy five inches. Uh, after our conversion, everything is what? Uh, 29. Everything is 29. Okay. So, half of 29 is what? 14.5, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So, I pick my compass. I measure length of 14.5, uh, which is this length of 14.5. Stand right here. Okay. So, I do it here. 14.5. That's it right there. So for precision, I'm doing it at the bottom here also. So then I can either use your T square or your ruler. You understand? T square or ruler. You what? You draw this out horizontally like that. Do you see that? So likewise at the bottom here. I'm going to draw that out horizontally likewise. Do you see? Do you see? So that is this distance here. Likewise, coming to the top here, I'm replicating the same thing. From the midpoint here, first of all, bottom, top. Let me stand somewhere here also. Bottom and what top. You can actually make use of your T square to draw the horizontal line, or you make use of what of your ruler. Since I have to act right, I'll make use of my ruler here. I draw horizontally, then right here also, I draw horizontally. All right. So what is the next procedure? The next procedure is wherever uh, these our lines, our parallel lines, touches the arc here. Okay. So we, for this left hand side, okay, we are drawing it perpendicularly. Okay. Do you see? Perpendicularly. That's it. This to this. Perpendicularly to here. To this. So wherever it touches, this our bisector here. Okay. So I, I'm actually asteriking it on your own book over there. Don't asteric it. Just denote that junction. Okay. So likewise, right here also. So where our parallel line touches the arc here. So that's it. That should be there, there. So I'm going to pull it vertically downward. Okay. So it touches this bisector here, right here. Please don't asteric on your own sheet. All right. So I'm only actually doing that so that you can see it very well all right so what's the next procedure now just take a look so standing at this junction right here okay where our perpendicular line touches the bisector i extend my compass to that mark yeah where the horizontal line touches the arc here ensure you are careful so that's it i what i draw do you see that i draw you can draw it faintly first of all all right so i'm extending this to from that same junction, I extended it to where the horizontal line touches the arc here also at the bottom, which is this. Ensure 
you are precise with your uh, measurement and so I draw which is this also okay so likewise I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side here all right okay so standing right at that intersection here extending it to wherever the compass touches the horizontal line I mean the arc touches the horizontal line at the top here okay yeah from this midpoint here to this so I would I draw so do you see that so that's it so likewise the same thing towards the bottom part here okay so adjusting this to where the horizontal line touches the bigger okay so do you see then I what I draw also you see that I draw also so you can make it faint okay for a start so I think it's too bold let me lighten it a little yeah especially these junctions here lighten them a little okay so what's next so we have uh, an arc yeah we have her arc of radius 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.25 so how do we get those arcs so right here we are going to be applying the principle of tangency we are applying the principle of tangency all right so one thing is this uh principle of tangency is actually easy i don't like to it is cheap like plantain chips very cheap so you don't need to start looking here and there if you understand the rudiments of the principle of tangency then you'll be able to tackle any problem given on curve tangency so for this reason uh we came up with a full tutorial package yeah it's over two hours video yeah the, we have uh, i think yeah 15, 16 one lecture and 15 soft problem one lecture 15 soft problem so the lecture is up to 30 minutes and the videos everything is over two hours all right so if you listen to the explanation aspect i i'm assuring you you actually enjoy it and you're going to see pageantry from another perspective entirely you're going to actually find it interesting so how can you actually have access to this video this video is available on our website okay which is going to be displayed on your screen or at the end screen of this video www.michaellabs.com.ng uh, yeah you can access that video there at a reasonable amount all right so actually help yourself don't just uh study to pass the exam no study to understand so that you can actually teach others all right so uh how do i get the arc here so that arc after my conversion blah 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 then increasing the ratio by 1.5 then to a whole number it is giving us mark of what 10 radius what radius 10 so what's the first thing i'm going to do the first thing i'm going to do is standing right at this junction here okay i'm going to extend my compass to that arc which we draw the radius of that arc that we draw right here okay ensure you don't make mistake that's why i actually take my time to explain this video very well if i'm just going to just do it and leave within four or five minutes i'm done at most seven minutes but i want to take my time to explain it very well so that you are going to find it interesting you understand it very well so picking this dimension now do you see picking that radius now that's it so i come to my what to my ruler i come to my ruler what was the distance there this should be almost 71 okay so the radius for that arc there is what is 10 i'm adding 10 to that sorry i said almost 71 this uh 75.9 or let's say 76 let's say this 76 so 76 plus 10 because the arc over there is an external arc how did i know it's an external arc subscribe to that video of tangency in engineering drain then you'll be able to reduce which arc is internal which arc is external which arc is an arc on a straight line and when and where to actually apply each of those principles okay so this 76 plus 10 that would be what uh 86 86 which is what i'm having here right now okay i'm having it right now so i'm going to stand right here and what draw that arc faintly do you see i draw the arc faintly so let me double it let me do it for this bottom also so from that same junction the arc comes to the bottom part here okay do you see for this that's it so i'm going to take the what the measurement measure this is almost 46 okay 10. 46 sorry 10. 46 minus 10 here it is an internal 46 minus 10 is what 36 so i'm going to pick the 36 which is this so from that same junction also okay i would i draw this likewise 
rather than simply trying to draw this. So what's the next procedure now? The next procedure is with this particular arc that you are seeing here, we actually draw it from this junction. Okay, so I'm going to pick that also. Yes, that is the radius of that arc. So check the dimension. This is almost 21. 21 plus 10 is what? That's 31. That's 31. With my 31 that is here right now. Okay. So with my 31 now, standing at this midpoint here, I would, I draw the corresponding arc. Okay. Yeah. It should be the same thing here also. I don't need to measure. So I'm going to stand right here. Check and see. See for yourself. Do you see? That junction. Stand right there and what? And apply it likewise here also. So we have two intersections now. We have this junction and we have what? This junction. Please don't uh asteric on like this okay don't shade so the next thing is what i'm going to pick my compass and measure radius of what radius of 10. okay so with radius 10 on my compass right now i'm going to stand right here and come in sorry so ensure your dimensions are precise okay ensure they are precise okay with radius 10 standing as the first intersection here I what I draw. Do you see that? That's it. I draw. So ensuring it is still radius 10. Okay. Standing at this second intersection here. I what I draw. Do you see that? I draw also. So drawing this here. I'm coming. So that is it. So you can see. So that is it. If the examiner is going to actually assess it, they must see all those uh, your intersecting points. So that's why you put your dimensions and the likes, you understand. So it is going to show that you know what you are doing. All right. So coming to the bottom part here also, I'm going to apply the same principle. Okay. So from this junction right here, okay, I extend my compass, picking this same radius here. I think it's this. Okay, that's it. So Coming here, checking it, that's 46. 46. 46 minus 10. It should be minus, it should be, it is internal. 46 minus 10. That's 36. Okay, 36. So with my 36 standing right here, I would, I draw my arc. Do you see it that way? Then from this junction, extending it down here. Okay, picking the radius which we used to draw this arc here I want to do so I have it right now check the measurement that's mark of what 76 76 plus 10 is what 86 okay 86 so with 86 I stand at this same junction okay then I what I draw so I apply the principle of external here principle of what internal here so next is what standing at this junction picking uh the radius of this arc here. Do you see that? So then coming here, that's what's 21. 21 plus 10 is what? That's 31. 31. So with my 31 sitting at this junction, I would, I draw the corresponding arc. I'm going to apply the same thing from here also. So with my 31, I actually stand here, okay, to draw this first arc here. So with the same 31, I'm going to sit on mark H here and what? And draw the corresponding arc here. So we have what? Two intersection here also, first and what and second. So what's the next procedure? Pick my compass, measure radius of what? Radius of 10. Radius 10 mm. Standing at this intersection here, I would I joyfully I would I draw. You see that I draw. Okay. So coming to the bottom part here also with radius 10, I would. I draw so that's it so with that I can now take in out my what my axe right there I can take in them out so okay so likewise from that junction down here you can see so again we don't need this part this part. so that is the production of the object on the screen by increasing the scale to a scale of one 
ratio 1.5 so you don't actually need to erase anything you actually use thin line where you ought to use thin line and thick line where you ought to use what thick line all right so thank you very much so kindly ensure you follow us on all our social media platform and also you can also contact us on telegram yeah if you need a one-on-one -on -one tutorial or help with any assignment at a reasonable price at a reasonable price so once again my name remains Oluwatumbi blessing or the founder of michael tech Thank you.